Hello everybody, welcome back again. This is my reaction video of the match between Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic that just ended. It was the last match in the group stages of Björn Borg's group in the ATP World Tour Finals. This was a high stake match. The winner could take it all. The loser will go home. The winner will, have bo will book his place in the semi-final together with Dominic Team from this group. And you know, the, before the match started, you could see the players in their eyes that this was a battle. This was going to be a battle. You saw an extra focused Roger Federer when they warmed up. And Roger won this match. And to me, he, it was a super convincing victory. I, I didn't expect Roger to win that easy that he did today. If you look at the stats before this tournament, this was his 17... No, it, it, before this match, he has won 17 straight of his round rubin third matches in the ATP Tour Finals. And it's the 17th time that he advances to semifinals in 18 attempts he has only failed once to reach the semi-finals here so we know that this is a turf and a court that roger federer likes in the atp finals is hyper fast it suits roger federer and um, oh boy how did he play today the roger federer we saw today was vintage roger Be the Roger that we saw a little glimpse of in the Basel final and the semi final where he beat Stefano Tsitsipas, Roger came out like a madman, like a man on a mission. He was so focused in this match. I've never seen Roger this focused because not only just because of the high stake of the match. Roger has lost some couple of uh, have lost a couple of matches against Novak after having match points. We know the epic uh, failure in the Wimbledon final. He finally got this revenge, a, a small revenge. Still, he hasn't won this tournament. Still, he has the chance to do that. But the way Roger played today, it was amazing for, for tennis lovers. Maybe not uh, Novak's fans or the other, other fans. But if you like tennis, this was a masterclass performance by Roger. It was clinical. It was... Roger at his best, it was ultra brutal, ultra aggressive first strike tennis with low forced, low unforced error numbers. And that's how you beat Novak Djokovic. By playing aggressive and put him out of his comfort zone, which is the baseline. And Roger did that today. So, if I start with the first set, a little bit a, re, a, a reaction of the first set, a little pre, a review of the first set. Roger took his teeth directly in this match. He served superb. His service number was um, 83% first service in. He won 84% of his first service in and 100% of his second service in. If you play like that, you have a solid and a superb chance to beat Novak. And he had three 40 love games in, in the match also, in the first set, and made produced eight aces and only lost three points in his serve. To compare it with Novak's numbers, it was 66% first of numbers in, he only won 62% of them and um, made three double faults. And Roger made uh, like, how many winners did he do? He did uh, 12 winners and 1 unforced errors from his backhand and Novak did 7 winners and 6 unforced errors. So, when no Roger played that clinical and solid, the number talks for himself. But, to go a little deeper in the first set, Roger's serve worked with variation. He made eight aces, he controlled the service game, he was secure there, he served his way out of trouble, the little trouble that he, he, he got in the, in, in the first set, and 
He got some net approach. His serve and volley was like bread and butter. Two combined things that work so good together. And he, like I said, he got Novak Djokovic out of his comfort zone because as soon as they started to rally, you saw that Novak was the more clutch. He was the, he got everything under control, and he just hit winners from from his uh, from from his backhand and forehand. The, one of the few winners that he had in the first set. So, but the most important thing in the first set, according to me, besides the serve, it was Roger Federer's uh, service game, r returning game. Because that was the key moment in this match, before the match. If Roger was gonna return well in this match, he would have a decent chance to beat Novak. We all know that Roger can sometimes return terrible from both from the first and second serve. We have seen that many times before, but in this match, totally combined, he won more points than Novak on the re re return game. And, and Novak is the best returner in the world, as we all know. He returned, he won 43% of his returning game in the first serve and 38 in the second serve. And that's a huge number if you compare to Novak's 19 and 15 in the first and second serve, in Roger's fifth, uh, first and second serve. That showed that Novak didn't return good in this match. That was necessary for him to win because he punished, he creates winners from, 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 from his returning. And that's how he wins and, and breaks in his opponents. But in this match, Roger served so solid, he barely lo lost point in his first and second uh, service. In the first set, he only lost three points in his service game. So imagine how Novak felt when he was out there. And it was Roger. It was the first time since 2015 that he beat Novak, and Novak has beaten him. I think it before this match it was four or five times in in in, in a row. But Roger changed that. The last time he won was actually here. 2015 around Ruben stages also very beat, but later on lost the final against Novak, and um, you saw the fire in Roger's side. He was there from start to the end. He wasn't go going in anywhere, and in the second set he started out a little bit slower. Roger had two break opponent uh, opportunities in Novak serve, but he failed, and then he, Novak took the took the game. And then after, I, I, I don't know if it was Roger's first service game or, it, or if it was his second game. Novak finally got the break point, but blew it away. Ro Roger did some superb serving there. He served his way out of trouble. And he was clinical in, in, in the baseline rallies and he pushed uh, Novak there. And in the second set, I thought to myself, Ro Novak is going to come into the match. He started hit some winners, he got control in his ground stroke, but it was something that was missing because the game was there, the control was there, but not the focus and, and the mental part. That was somewhere else somewhere else. And we all know Roger and Roger and Novak they can disappear from matches. They can disappear for five, ten minutes. And that what and that is what Novak did today. But not to take anything, anything away from Roger, his uh, this performance is one of the best I've seen Roger in years, to be honest, since Wimbledon actually, since his match against uh, Rafael Nadal in the semi-finals, and he played superb also in the final, the final that he lost, as you all know. But this ultra aggressive, clean striking, this was this was vintage Roger Federer. This reminded me of vintage Roger. He's 38 years old, guys, girls who listen to this video. I don't know, maybe I, it's not many people that watch my videos, but anyway, I like what I'm doing. I have a big passion for tennis. It's the biggest passion I have in life. I eat, sleep, drink tennis. And even in my sleep, maybe sometimes I dream about tennis if, if, I, may have, if I have a good day. And today is a good day because I prefer Roger Federer's first strike 
tennis is like an architect every stroke that he does it's like a painting when you brush a painting everything is calculated it's smooth it's um, it, it has a purpose exactly like Novak's game but it, it's the contrary it's like plus and minus he's a defender he's an attacking player and I like the attacking player to be honest and this victory seen Rafael Nadal's um, number one spot in the year ranking and he will he will continue to have the number one spot on the ranking also be congratulations to Rafael Nadal who has the number one year ranking in his pocket now it's a good Christmas gift for him not a gift he has this was a hard earned victory for, from him of course but it's a good uh, thing for me anyway oh this match really took some energy for me to be honest and uh, totally in the match Roger Federer had 73% first service in he won 81% of them and his second serve was 59% service in for Novak it was 30, 74% first serve in but he only won 57% of them and he only got won 44% of his second serves so that means that Roger he didn't do so much unforced errors in the match he only made 6 unforced errors in this match and he hit 23 winners that's a huge number for Roger Federer in 2 sets and count in that he did I think he did 2 double faults also so it was a clean low unforced error performance by Roger and uh, Novak only hit 14 winners he made third time as much as uh, unforced errors like Federer did he did 18 unforced errors, unforced errors in this match so what can we say I'm very impressed by Roger but what can we say about Novak in this match was he pale because when he lost that breakpoint op opportunity in Roger's first or second service, I think mentally he was drained in that match. He had a tough and tight battle against Dominic Thiem. He played very well in that match. But this was a this was a very meaningful match because the winner takes it all and the winner stands tall. And that's what Novak did. Novak had, have had a superb year so far, two Grand Slams, and I think he won two or three Masters, I, I think he won uh, two Masters, so it's a good year for him by any means, it's a big title that counts, and he collected those two titles that he was expected to take, Australian Open and Wimbledon, and he will bounce back after uh, in, in next year of course we can still count on the big three the big three are still supreme on every surface you can never count them out in any surface hard court and grass you have Novak and Federer even if even if uh, Federer haven't won a Grand Slam this year on clay we all know French Open you have to take it from Nadal it's one of the biggest tasks in sport history to beat Nadal at clay has never lost the final there and um, as I said earlier, Roger is 38 years old, but he's ageless. Number doesn't count in his, but he still has the, um, he still likes to play tennis. He's out there competing week after week after week. With this performance, it's going to boost his confidence even more. Because many have counted Roger out of winning Grand Slam. Maybe I am one of them, but I'm, I still that he... he he has one, he can at least win one more Grand Slam and he knows that himself also. And this per clean performance, you can never doubt. But Roger is not, he is consistent, but not super consistent like he was before when he reached every, every se at least semifinals in every Grand Slam. He has a record of that, I don't know if it's 35 or 38 straight Grand Slam semifinals in Rob, which is a huge number, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so, 
This meeting is one of the longest rivals, rivalry in history uh, in the current era. Just the Nadal Djokovic era, uh, rivalry has played more matches. This is a never ending story and they will continue. They will meet more again. And it's good for Federer for his confidence, for a boost to finally beat Novak after four years. It has been that long. Now the only thing is to beat him in Grand Slam. He hasn't done that since the Wimbledon semi-final in 2012. After that, he went on to beat Andy Murray in the final. And then it was a drain for Roger Federer until his uh, magical performance in Melbourne in 2017. Now this, and um, if Roger plays like this, he, he's the man to beat. Because what I saw today, if he can keep this level, he will win. If he meets Nadal in the semi-final, it depends on the yesterday's matches. Nadal, Nadal can crash out tomorrow, you never know. If Tsitsipas win, but he has nothing to play for, he has only advanced to the semi-final. And uh, if Medvedev beats Zverev, I think even if Nadal loses, he, he will advance through the semi-final. I, I, I haven't done the math with, with um, different uh, solution that uh, when, when I, but I know the, the main thing is the head to head. That's the first that you count. And uh, late, late earlier today, before this match, Dominic team lost, uh, unmotivated uh, Dominic team lost to Matteo Berrettini, who is the first Italian guy to win a match in this ATP Finals. We congratulations to him. He will uh, hold his head high, and uh, it's good that he didn't lose all the matches. It's a good experience. Maybe he can bounce back and come back next year for Novak. Big congratulations for a fantastic year. I really have started to like his playing style because everything he does, he does it so good. And he's the most complete player on tour. The one who argues against that really doesn't know anything about tennis. He's solid, rock, rock solid. He, he, you can't hit for, it's so difficult to hit for Novak. The only weakness in his game is like, um, all credit to Roger's performance today, but sometimes when he, he disappears from the matches and that's when you're going to take your chance if you don't take your chance when Novak have the little short dip then you're finished and Roger took full advantage of that Roger didn't dip in this match Roger performed a hell of a performance he did exactly what we knew that he was ha that he had to do to beat Novak it came to as a surprise to me. It wasn't a surprise that he won. He has the game. He has the short, short selection. He got the experience. He got everything to still compete in the highest level. And just look at the ranking. Just look at his stats. Even if some wish that he has, should have won at least one grand slam this year. Just look at his stats. He's still going strong. He will not quit next year. He will finish as long as he wants. He will quit on his own term. If just... Uh, only if he gets some serious injury, he want, he doesn't, or starting to lose matches because his legacy is important also. He, he doesn't want to risk his legacy, but Roger no wants to quit. Just leave it to him. Don't speculate. It's good. As long as he plays, it's good for tennis lovers. It's good for the competition between the uh, big three because they still can compete for years. I know that. They are so mentally strong. They are well trained. They have all the help they can need. They have the best staff. They have everything. I don't see anything negative. And age is just a number in Roger's case. Today he moved superb around the court. He was like a young gazelle on the savannah. He moved, moved, moved. Even though Roger uh, got uh, outplayed sometimes in some rallies. But that's because Novak has some... some he's... His ground stroke has deep. They are deep. The length and the depth of the, his ground stroke are so good that it's, nobody can, can, can uh, fish them up. And today, just want to say, Roger, you're the man. Hell of a performance. Maybe you can do that again in the semifinals and the finals. 
Thanks for listening. Take care and bye-bye.